Hello, Willie. Happy to see you. Hey, what's up, man? A uh, small time fan of your content, found you through one of my viewers who eagerly recommended your Sadako gameplay. How are you? Yeah, I'm a big time fan of your content, man. I've been watching you for years. Really excited that we're getting some some love for the Goopy Oreo, man. I love I love that we can say I've been watching you for years and it's not creepy or anything. <laughs> <laughs> In any other context, you don't say that yeah. to people. You know? <laughs> um, maybe as Mikey or Ghostface, it'd be okay to watch somebody for years. <laughs> anyway, all right. So here's the thing. All right, long story short. Thank you, Marisa. Yeah, um, go for it. I'm doing a tier list and I'm trying to constantly understand the strengths of each killer and so on and so forth, right? Uh -huh. And for Sadako, uh, it seems to me like, like I don't want to understand a killer at their best or at their worst. I just want to understand like their average if you play them well, right? And to me, it seems exactly. like Sadako has two styles of play. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. there's more, maybe there's less, but two of them that stand out. One of them would be to use things like newspaper, uh, the mirror, um, some people even swear by Reiko's watch and try to be like sneaky, have chases, uh, have tools in chase kind of, kind of deal. Right. And then the other one, the more prominent one is the whole, okay, just bring the one or two add-ons that help with condemned spread and just aggressively condemn the heck out of them and make it really hard to avoid. Exactly. I agree. And there, there's also another build combo with the telephone and the bloody fingernails that help you in chase. The bloody fingernails make you 50% faster, so you can do mm -hmm. a chase build with that as well. Okay. But yeah, so there are a couple of different builds. You can go for purely condemns. You could go for some manifest, demanifest oh. mind games. Okay, so in your in your things. in your opinion, what would be on average? Like, uh, let me paint the picture for you. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. Uh, I want to play Sadako, okay? And if I don't have an average of like 3.8 kills, my family gets kidnapped. I need to do extremely well. I need to win. Most of my games I need to do super, super, super well. Don't forget, like, don't mind the 3 or 4K. I just need to win consistently. Okay. Right? Okay. And so, obviously, I'm not going to choose the map every time. Uh, that that exactly. part is out of my control. I need the bloody oh, exactly. body streamers. But add-ons, uh, sure, are all uh, available, especially the less rare ones that you can get plenty of, right? So what would, what would your build be? What would, what would be your general strategy? Walk us through it. Okay. So the most optimal way is going for a condemns, especially if you can get an early kill. Uh, oftentimes, especially if survivors don't realize the danger of having a tape in their hand with a tape editing deck, yeah. and you teleport a couple of times around when you're chasing them, zoning them from putting their TV up or mm -hmm. the tape up at the beginning, that can net a really early Mori around five or four gens, and then the rest of the game is basically a, a write-off. Right, because, because any any time you kill a survivor and there's two or three gens left, that that's basically yeah, bullying. It, so it's, yeah, it's insane pressure. Like the goal um, is it, the goal. It, I think is very clear to understand. Um, if you want to walk us through the means, uh, a bit yeah, more. definitely. So I did watch that last game. For mm -hmm. example, Meg was able to put her tape off with just one pallet stun. Sometimes that's all that's needed. So you could also potentially run enduring to prevent that. Okay. Um, currently, you mean you mean the one I, of the sh the one of the shack, right? Yeah. I mean, what I could have done. It's just not follow her and just just try to like zone her out into the corner a bit more, like true, that that true. that 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 I can I can see it is completely doable and definitely like something I could have done. I think at that point I'm just afraid that I'm just gonna like lose her or something. Um, my right. problem my problem though is I have the situation right before that where she's she's condemned, fully condemned, but but she's not exposed and she's far away, and I know which TV right. she needs to go. Like, what do I do? Like, if that I don't find is, her, that is pretty tricky. There, you have to make a decision. You have to, and you do kind of need to track her. So, I think at one point she had killer instinct, and she was at a specific TV, um, in the corner of the map. Now, it depends if that TV where her tape led to was on or off. If it's on, then you can safely position yourself across the other side of the map, try and pressure her to get down over there. And if she does make it back to the TV in time you have it available to TP and you can cancel the tape animation. Right. If it's off, then you kind of just need to hang out, wait a minute, and then when it comes back on, right. you can right. go around. So, okay, so the idea in a situation like, because I'm, I'm seeing two options right now, right? And I think basically you're telling me there's a third. Option one is just sit by the TV forever and watch everything crumble and we'll just watch her be healthy and do nothing and I'm losing the game slowly, right? Even if I kill her, right. it's just going to be a one gen, no matter how much... I want them not to, they're going to do gens. And the other one, right. which is the one I went for, I'm like, okay, I'm going to work under the assumption that she's not playing this perfectly, and I'm going to try to hook the Jake. That way I have plan A, plan B kind of thing going on. So yeah, your exactly. idea is 
maybe to wait until that TV is back on so that then I have the threat of teleporting to it and it's harder exactly. for them to do anything. Exactly. And I love the fact that you're using save the best for last. I think no, like that that's that, no, that like I, like I saw that in your build and it makes complete sense. Like there's no other way you pull this off if they if this like because in this match, even though these guys were not like a full man or anything, they, they were taking hits for each other. They were playing really smart. Right, exactly. And well, the thing is taking hits actually can be detrimental for survivors because when Sudoku is de-manifested, she can phase through people. So if if you do slow down while you yeah. start manifesting, mm -hmm. but you can kind of avoid body blocks simply just by phasing through people. Right, but like, obviously, it's still gonna make you the manifest or take the hit. And like, yeah. if they take a hit clutch on, on a TV station, uh, like near, like, I, I think that pretty much guarantees that they're gonna put the tape in. Exactly, so. yeah. The, the timing is kind of tricky and the fact that it does slow you down is annoying. Um, but honestly, what is more detrimental for survivors to do if they want to help out somebody that's max condemn is that they need to go and they need to take the tape from the TV. Where yeah, yeah. So someone else in this yeah. situation, uh, let's say they're on comps. We don't know if they were. Uh, they they identify that that tape in the pallet gym is the one, and they want mm -hmm. to prevent me from teleporting to it. So basically, they go and steal it, and then Meg still yeah. has to do it there. So now she can do it more safely, quote unquote, because yes. you cannot you cannot mess around. You cannot only teleport. So that would be the, the, that would be their ideal counterplay, which they didn't quite do. Right. But the good news is, even if they do slightly counterplay, for example, like uh, in the main building when they all took hits for Meg there, even though she got her tape off, just the 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 pressure of that death threat made so many people within close yeah, range. Yeah, yeah, and at that and at that point tape. you have like twenty five stacks as those right. Yeah, so, sure. So there is sort of a trade. You may not have gotten yeah, no, immediately. Yeah, for sure. No, like that event yeah. eventually made me win the game, even though it wasn't our plan. Eh? Ex exactly. So, so I'm going to go uh, into you know, into this with a renewed mindset. Would you summarize like two or three tips, uh, do's or don'ts, and maybe some build suggestions um, so that I, I do it even better next match? Yeah. So for build suggestion, uh, I like save the best for last. Now, I'll, I have tested out Sloppy Butcher and Knockout. But since we spread Condemn with ring drawing and Sloppy kind of incentivizes survivors to stay injured and just work on gens instead of heal, mm -hmm. um, I find that it's a little bit counterproductive in terms of spreading Condemn. Uh, I like them to be able to spread and, and heal quicker. Um, so Thanatophobia is really nice also because we have insane map pressure. We can TP from gen to gen since TV spawns are near gens. Okay. So we can get Thanatophobia stacks really early game. Also, play with your food is not horrible. Um, you can do play with your food. Brutal strength is very consistent. Um, but play with your food has a really nice synergy with save the best for last in case you just happen across your obsession. Mm -hmm. um, since Sudoku is not that strong in chase, you can at least get a little movement speed stack, which also helps close the distance when someone's trying to run up and put up their tape. Um, one thing I'm struggling with at the start, and the reason I brought Lethal Pursuer, I, I don't always have a clear picture of where people spawn and what tb they have to go for is there any yeah. tip that could save me from using this perk or do you have anything to say about that um just getting practice in and honestly lethal is a great perk to start off uh determining where people spawn and where the tapes go the nice thing with the tape editing deck is that survivors um when they spawn their target tv is the farthest from their location so it's it's kind of spawn. it's kind of easy to figure out like yeah what they're doing yeah yeah, no, normally when they pick up a tape, it's RNG based. So it could be the farthest, it could be a medium. Yeah, but with this with this one add on, just so people understand, Correct. it's not RNG. It's always the yes. furthest. So they don't spawn Al next to it. Although, um, I think, so also with RNG, when people are picking up tapes, their tapes could potentially all lead to the same TV. Right. Which, which can be insane. But with the tape editing deck, I haven't noticed that. And so I think that they, um, they all lead to different TVs. So that could potentially mean that a survivor is putting their TV up um, a lot closer than the farthest TV if they all spawn in the same area. Mm. So you do need to look out for that. Also, if they put up their tape before the TV spawn within the first 30 to 45 seconds, the TV will still turn on at the beginning of the game. Wait, 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 wait. Could you, could you walk me through, through that one more time to make sure I understand it? Yeah, so when you spawn in, I guess the devs thought that it would be too strong to just have instant Yeah, map the, 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 there's a cooldown to the TVs turning on. Precisely, yes. 
so normally when a t when a tape is put up it turns that tv off if it is on for a minute and 20 seconds but if it's put away before the tv has spawned and, and turned on the tv will still turn on so they could put okay. away the tape okay. and then the tv could come on so you could uh, um, so it's it's a it's just a little something okay it's not okay. too game changing okay no that's actually a really good detail that i had no idea about so thank you so much all right yeah uh oh, one, one more perk one more perk this is really important also if you want to um build a lot of condemn and try and stop prove thyself it is kind of a rush against the clock in terms of will survivors complete generators first yeah or will you be able to get condemn first and so I found that Discordance is extremely valuable since, especially because TVs are near gins. If you get that yellow Discord, then you can TP, get right. guaranteed two stacks. And uh, I'm going to really give, cool. I'm going to give that a shot instead of uh, lethal then since they're kind of overlapping a bit at the start. Cool. All right. Um, Perfect. There's nothing else I'd like to, to add other than thank you so much. And if I don't get a 4k on the next match, you are fired. And this killer is <laughs> F tier. And I will make 10 forum posts all about this. Of so course, of it will course. Be ex and exactly of course, yeah. your fault. <laughs> it, it is it is a fun meme-ish build. And uh, yeah, against like comp players, yeah, good, good luck. But it, it is it is really well, fun. Well, to be fair, you know, what, what's going to work against comp players? Uh, you know, like, let's be real. Like, true, we're, true. We're, not expect we're not yeah. expecting miracles here. Uh, thank you so much. Um, lovely yeah, chatting with you. And obviously, uh, my viewers are more than more than welcome yeah, no, to... Yeah, the, the pleasure was mine, man. Thank you so Hopefully much. we can hang out and get some games in later. Anytime. All right. Big hugs. Yeah, pop. See ya. Bye -bye. Yeah, peace out, man. What a what an energetic individual. That was super nice. Uh, go check out One Pump Willie on Twitch.